Good evening, my friend. Bright suns, good journeys, and all the other stuff they say in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and aboard the Halcyon. I am Lou Mangello. You are my friend. Welcome to WDW Radio Live. If you are watching live, please do me a favor. Sit back, relax, tag, and invite a friend. And if you're watching on the replay, don't forget to join us here every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern at WDWRadioLive.com. Uh, I feel like I haven't been here in so long. I don't know why. I've missed you. Um, I have been to sea and I've been to space. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight as uh, we share some stories and answer your questions about the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser in Walt Disney World. If you had a chance to download this week's show, um, I was joined by my family and one Becky, where is it? Mahankin. Man, man, Becky Ma Becky Mankin from wow. MEI and Mouse Fan Travel as we uh, shared our experiences aboard the Halcyon in 10 things that you need to know uh, about the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser. There was obviously a lot to try and unpack, and I thought that you probably left some questions of yours unanswered, which is why tonight I thought we would do a live show not just with me, not just with Mrs. Mahankin herself, but with a true... Real life, I have bona fide. I checked it. He is a Star Wars expert. He is a former guest. And wait a minute. Did that check clear? Yes, my friend, Dan Zier from Coffee with Kenobi and StarWars.com. A couple of things very quickly before I forget, because I have a feeling we're going to get wrapped up in all of the Star Warsy stuff. Quick, quick, actually, it's not a reminder. It's actually a notice to let you know that starting today, the WW Radio Magic Mail Letter Exchange is back once again. Uh, it is a great way to make and meet a new friend, get a little uh, magic care package along the way, simply by sending a letter or a card to a person in the exchange group. You can sign up now. It's free, other than the cost of a stamp, by Friday, March 18th at www.radio.com slash magic mail. So with that out of the way, I want to get into our conversation about the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser and answer your questions as well. So I want to welcome back to the live show and maybe to, I guess, to the live show for the first time, ladies first, Becky Menken from Mouse Fan Travel and Dan Zier from Coffee with Kenobi. And listen, let's, uh, let's play it up, man. Also from StarWars.com. Hello there. Is, was that your, was that your the Alec Guinness show. impression? Hello there. Was that is that what you're yeah, going? Yeah, pretty for? much. <laughs> With the uh, listen, well, the Kenobi the Kenobi trailer dropped just in time for tonight's show, so I am That's all great. also in a very Kenobi like mood. I was it's going gonna to be a my... lot of fun. I brought my coffee. I brought my what? What does Lou Mangiello drink? I, I think that's what I want to know. Well, you know what? I uh, I don't fool around with things like I go right for the hard stuff, man. I go. I drink my ice water in my uh, in my Darth Vader Tervis tumbler. That a boy. Dark side. Dark side, see, Sith, once again. Raises Nothing else is clean. Uh... Nothing else is clean. So. <laughs> uh... See, even on the show, I have to literally be between those two so they don't fight. Yeah. Oops, oh, here we go. So we have a couple of people already <laughs> saying hello yeah. to uh, to Princess Becky Mankin. Right. Uh, so oh, good Princess to see Becky. so many familiar faces. If you are new to the show for the very first time, please do me a favor, say hi, introduce yourself, and accept my apologies for whatever might come in the next however long this show. Uh, Jeff C. says, does the Turvis have blue milk? No, but the Halcyon does. And we will get mm -hmm. to that among uh, many things as well. Becky, it is great to see you again. Dan, it has been way too long, my friend. For those of you who may not be familiar with the, again, according to the script, it says the legendary one and only scoundrel, Dan Zier. Uh, do me a favor. Give me a quick little background on uh, who is Mr. Zare? And uh, a little bit about your Star Wars fandom and what you do over at Coffee with Kenobi. Certainly. Well, well, thank you. Yeah, Coffee with Kenobi is a spoiler-free, family-friendly podcast in Star Wars community where you can share your Star Wars views um, in a safe space. We like to analyze it. My day job is out of an English teacher in the high school level, so I like to break down the Star Wars films, books, comics, Disney Plus series as text, but also have a little bit of fun along the way. We take the topic seriously but not ourselves seriously. 
I also do, as you mentioned, some writing for stars.com, and I've written a couple of Star Wars books as well. So I am very excited to talk about this amazing Disney experience. Yeah, you actually have a new book that just came out relatively recently, correct? Yes, and I've got the Star Wars character encyclopedia, and then on May 10th, I've got uh, Star Wars Darth Vader, I Am Your Father, Lessons for Parents and Mentors. <laughs> I love it. That's wow. great. Yeah, we're going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to have you come back on and, and talk all about that. But tonight, we're here to talk about the Galactic Star Cruiser. We all had a chance to experience it. Unfortunately, at different times, I was really hoping, Dan, we would get a chance to see and experience it together. Maybe uh, break some bread and, I know at least in my case, shed a few tears. Uh, you were able to go to the media preview the week before it opened and you did an actual stay correct you did a the the full two night stay yes i did the two night three day stay absolutely and i definitely shed quite a few tears that's and that my friend is why we're friends and the check cleared and the check clearing those are the two reasons yeah. why we are friends glad this one didn't bounce that was messy <laughs> last time um <laughs> so i want to quickly just because we really haven't talked about this. We, you and I ex have been exchanging texts, but I guess in anticipation of chatting together, I asked you, I said, describe it in one word. And you asked me to describe it in one word. Tell me what the one word was you used to describe it. And just briefly, what your expectations were before you even stepped foot aboard. The one word I used in all caps was insane. Because I knew that it was going to be fun. I hope expectations but i put insane because it blew my mind how in-depth this was how immersive this was i feel like this was the immersive experience that galaxy's edge started out to be and it sort of lost its way a little bit and this has become something more than i could have dreamed possible especially because my family my wife and my eight-year-old son all of us enjoyed it for very different reasons and we're all three at very different levels of star wars fandom my wife doesn't care about star wars but she loves the fun it brings to our family my eight-year-old son, of course, he loves it, and I'm a, a, a Star Wars fanatic as well. So all of us, at different levels of fandom, and I'm an extrovert, my wife is an introvert, she loved it as well. To me, that is pretty incredible that they can organically make you all want to participate and enjoy it, regardless of where you're at. And I really, I, so I didn't know, I'm, I'm, I love the fact that you were able to share it with your family, because I think the experience takes on... It has a different impact and, and I think a different meaning because it's not just, at least for me, it wasn't just about experience it for myself and by myself and, and with friends and family, but watching their reactions as well. Oh, very much. That that was the whole thing about it. The, the missions and the, just even walking into the atrium itself and just how it brought us all together. I mean, and we were constantly just talking Star Wars and talking about our missions and when's lightsaber training. And, you know, did you try those, those cheese noodles yet? You know, it was just, it was, it made it so much better when you go with people that you so care about. Bad. And, you know, Becky can't hear us cause she's off in the green room, which is great. But I loved actually, you know, as much as I was watching my kids, yeah. I was watching Becky, right? Not that she's like my child, but in a certain way, I wanted to see what her reaction was. And I, you know, I could do a top five list of experiences that I've shared with Becky where she has that giddy, childlike laughter and excitement that I, I loved seeing because when we were all there, it wasn't about covering it or seeing, like looking at it that way. We were all, oh, Becky is there. We were all able to enjoy yeah. it strictly as <laughs> nine year old Star Wars fans. Yeah, especially the point when you went when we got into the room and you ran into the the second room with the bunk beds and literally <laughs> scurried up the ladder as fast as he could, jumped in there and screamed for all of us to hear, "Mine, I'm sleeping here." <laughs> it was it was absolutely hilarious, but that was the point is that we weren't just like going from interview to interview to interview doing the normal thing that you would do at a, a media thing it was being able to experience all of it as guests and it, it was fantastic and it was giddy and it was joy and yeah i turned into an eight-year-old and i think that was it and i and i said on the show which dana i'll paraphrase for you since i know you never listen but i 
had sorry, such, I wasn't listening. <laughs> I had such <laughs> strong, like visceral emotional reactions watching my kids, thinking about my dad. Like even yeah, you know, watching Becky and watching the other Gus and there were times I, I had tears streaming down my face as I was watching the kids and everybody sort of go off on their own. I was talking to Ann Morrow Johnson and I was just, I went over purely just to thank her and I broke down and I'm like, what is wrong with me? Like, so I'm crying and then she's crying and, and um, I was talking to her and then, and I'm not trying to sort of name drop, but I love the fact like Scott Trowbridge was there and he's like, that's it. Like, that's what we are hoping for. This is exactly the kind of reaction that we want. And I know that I wasn't alone and you weren't alone because I saw that same thing happening with, you know, families and, and other people that were on board as well. Yeah. When we, when we got on, when we first boarded, um, everybody was there too, that you mentioned. And I talked with Scott several times and he said, and I'm sure you've heard this quote a lot. This is for Star Wars fans and for people who love Star Wars fans. And I think that comes through so beautifully because of the way again that they they create these moments in the in the jedi training uh there was a part i don't want to spoil things but there's one part where they select a certain jedi for a certain task in that room and they selected mason and him being a part of that and everyone sort of chanting his name but it wasn't creepy it was just very powerful and this idea and in deanna my wife my wife's also uh deanna a separate deanna she's (laughs) she said you know, Thanks I love the idea that they're flying. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I love that this idea of together we are stronger. And that was a great, great thing. And that, I mean, I was bawling. Between that and walking into the room for the first time, walking in the atrium, there's just these moments that just take your breath away. Because you you feel like, and Mason said this best, I feel like I was in a Star Wars movie for three days. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, how it felt. And, and there was some... I caught some of that as well. There was some sort of powerful messaging that was sort of built into the story, which I really liked. And we talked a lot about the story being this overarching story that's being told, as well as the compartmentalized and individual stories, you and family, you and friends, or just you on your own. And I and I loved that, you know, I sort of keep thinking about it as, as a flow chart. The choices you make lead to the, the path that you end up going down and how my story was different than Becky's and my kids and my traitor of a wife who joined the First Order. Um, but that's part of what made it so fun, too. Isn't that cool? Like they said, you know, you can all work together on these missions if you want to, or you can separate and just kind of see where the force takes you. And that I love having that option. Molly said, did Lou crawl through the secret pass ever? Um, I, I refuse to answer that question. Nobody. Well, yes, I did, because it's. I don't what? think anybody actually videotaped it. Did it take you a long time to get that, up? I was wondering about you. It was it, they had to sort of bring in a little one of those little cranes to sort of. Sure. But like how cool, like my kids and I keep sort of referring to this. My daughter, who's 18 and not a huge Star Wars fan, the giddiness on her. I'm going to get choked up again. The giddiness on her face, that that expression in her eyes, that laughter, that. Sometimes you don't always hear in an 18 year old girl with something as simple as that crawl through space and locking herself in there. It's, it's a simple throwaway thing, but it was one of the sort of moments that I remember most. She was was able to crawl through a lot easier than that. Becky, you didn't do that. You didn't actually try crawling through the crawl space. Did you? No. Why would I? Why Why wouldn't you? I I, I, got to try everything. (laughs) You're the travel expert. You have to try everything. Exactly. I tried a lot. I tried a lot. I tried a lot of food. I tried a lot of drink. I tried a lot of missions. I tr- I was exhausted. I was so exhausted by the end of this experience in a good way. I, I was, um, as a matter of fact, Stan had a really good question, if you can find that one. It was, was two nights too short, just right, or not long enough? And that, that's a great question. Uh, for me, and, and, and we said this too, I think it was, because I was concerned too. I'm like, wow, this does not seem like it's a long time. It was perfect. Like, I think mm-hmm. any longer almost would have been too much. And I don't know if we just, the old man and me, Dan, like we all felt like we needed, we needed a day. Like after we need like, you need sort of like a recovery day after the start. In the best way, you need a recovery day. I described it as, 
Vegas for families because you have no idea what time of day it is. You can't That's see true. the sun unless you purposely try to. You have no idea. Uh, what, you know, at one point on the second day, I looked at my watch and, and I said, it's three o'clock. I thought it was 10 o'clock at night because it is the perfect amount. I was worried about that too. Is there going to be enough activities? Will be will we want more? Will we want less? It is it is literally the perfect amount of time because you get just enough to kind of turn off your brain and escape from the real world and just have some fun. But when you're done, you are blissfully exhausted. <laughs> yes, exactly. And I agree with both of you. I was concerned at first too, especially when you talk the price point and it's only two nights and three days. But you're not only physically exhausted, you're mentally exhausted. If you do it right and you get involved and you look for all the things that are going on around you, it is taxing. So I think the first night I got four hours of sleep because we stayed up really late trying to, to take it all in of the activities that were available to us, got to sleep, got up really early because you had to uh, have breakfast and get ready, have breakfast, and then go hit the the missions that were going to be in front of you for your shore excursion. So it, it was the perfect amount of time. I think when we left on Sunday, I kind of felt that. It's like, I feel satisfied. I feel like I got into the story. I feel like I, uh, all right, would a space spa be a great idea if they want to add it another day? Sure thing. I'm all in for that. But, um, but yeah, space spa. <laughs> space everything um it was it was the perfect amount of time for me i think the trick for though is in your rooms the the portal we had open all night long both nights because mason wanted to see it and let's be honest i did too so at one point i woke up and i saw this bright light i'm like oh it's morning time to get some breakfast it was three in the morning <laughs> and i thought well i'm up so i just walked around the ship and videoed a bunch of stuff because you know you really do lose track of time yeah, my yeah. kid said, and I agree, that I wish it was almost a way to keep the window open, but turn off the lights on the yes. bezel around it. So you agree. can sort of keep that view out in out in space. I wish Absolutely. they would, too. That was, I finally just gave up and said, I don't care. I'm going to leave the light on because I want to fall asleep looking out that portal. I want to see what's going on out there. So, yeah, so you I, usually I, have a nightlight anyway, don't you? What? Ooh, Becky? Don't you usually have a nightlight on anyway? So that would that, just made you feel safer. For Becky, that's her call no, button. No, no nightlight. That's the concierge no, call it's button. A... She just has it like. Oh, no. oh my mistake. Yeah. It's I like, read the wrong TV. note. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so it's we're going to, while we're, while we're chatting, it. <laughs> this is a Q&A. And I see some of you are, are popping up questions that we're going to go ahead and answer. Because again, I think that you probably have some individualized questions that other people probably share as well. So, uh, Emily Ennis says, did y'all have an assigned time to board like on DCL? Uh, yeah, there were, there were a lot of sort of cruise like similarities and you do have an assigned boarding time and your boarding time is your time to valet park the car and begin the boarding process. Um, which I liked and, and I was sort of very pleasantly surprised at how that went, having no idea that. They were going to give us a data pad to use, which I loved. I know there was some discussion about having it on your own device versus having two devices. I loved having that singular device that had zero distractions. So all I was mm -hmm. focusing on were the missions at hand. I, well, I, I kind of, I needed the second one. I needed, I needed my phone. So it was hard for me. I know what they're doing. It makes total sense because it, it would take you out of the story if you could look up and all of a sudden, oh, let me check my email. And I, I get that. But um, my phone is what I used to take pictures with. So I was always carrying two devices anyway. And I was too. Well, once and the I'm Play Disney app, that'll change things too, won't it, once it gets updated? Because I got the impression that once kids are able to use the Play Disney app, um, then everything will be fine. You won't need that extra device. Oh, maybe. I, I liked it. I liked sort of... Yeah. Other than I taking do. pictures and videos, I like it keeping me. And having a second device allowed me to take pictures of the device, uh, of exactly yes. what was going on. Um, Good point. Dan, I, I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on this, and obviously Becky too. What do you think the level of repeatability, Maureen Carey wants to know? Right, I think that's a great question. Uh, I think it's very, very high, very high, because there are four different places you can select. You know, you can be a smuggler, you can be a Jedi. 
you can follow the first order you can uh join the resistance and Jesus. after i got off of the ship someone said to me uh did you see x y and z and i'm like no that was a thing and they said how do you feel since you missed that i said i feel great because i know when i go back it's going to be a brand new fresh experience for me so i think the repeatability is very very high yeah i completely agree especially in the short term we heard about things that we didn't experience because we didn't choose those paths or or didn't answer the questions correctly to send us to those other things which means that there are a ton of things that we didn't see so and the way that it's set up while you could go back now and have kind of the same storyline you could follow different paths and have different missions and different experiences but the ability for them to change the story into something completely different is easy to do on board the the star cruiser so while there's a star wars story that you're going to be a part of in 2022 who knows if they're going to change something in 2023 or 2024. true so i, I actually have a two-part answer to that question because you we cannot ignore the five thousand dollar elephant in the room so is there a repeatability factor yes you have to certainly take that into consideration. Um, everybody's financial situation, and and we talked about the the worth it thing. And and Dan, I'll I want to get your your take on that, obviously too. But I really walked in expecting this to be sort of a one and done, not just because of the price point, but I figured there is a linear story that we're all going to follow, and once you do it, you've kind of done it. You've seen all that there is to see. I realized halfway through the first day that I was a thousand percent wrong and I was 3000 percent wrong as we were getting ready to disembark at breakfast and we heard about these locations and stories and events and insert spoiler thing here that happened and we all looked at each other we're like we had no idea we just didn't even know that this was a thing and it was a it was actually two and they were sort of like big things and then all of a sudden i'm like well wait a minute now my desire to do this again just got ramped up a little bit more um i like i love doing it with my family i would love to get a bunch of friends together and do this like cram four people into a room split it four ways it even becomes a you know a better value quote unquote that way i think getting a bunch of friends to do this would be a lot of fun because it's like living a choose your own adventure. Yep. Uh, you know what I mean? Or like a murder mystery or an escape room, but you've got like 40 some hours to do it in. So Kelly Jean Simon says, do you have to do every mission? No. Um, which mm -hmm. is, which is wonderful. Like you can, we talk about choosing your level of participation, things that you want. Again, there's consequences of what you do and there's consequences of what, you don't do. Um, I mean, I certainly am familiar with, with our experience. Dan, I have to imagine that as things were popping up and as action is taking place, you were as all in as you could possibly be. Oh, yeah. I, I did not I did not ignore the comm one time. Everything I made sure I addressed everything. So we did all the missions and then some. But we also had plenty of time to place a Bach in the sublight lounge. So you can do everything and... And there were even more things like I didn't interact as much with the cast as I should have. I did a lot of my stuff through the app itself, but I watched people who were just following Gaia the entire time mm -hmm. and helping her with her luggage and her love life and all this kind of stuff. So yeah, you can do it all or you can just sit back and just people watch like you can't even imagine. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think interacting with people is, is not only more fun, but more quote unquote sort of important to the experience than, than what you do on the app. Oh, yeah. And I'm a little bit of an introvert. We talked about this before. And I'm not really comfortable just jumping in the middle of a room with people that I don't know. I like to kind of stay on the outside and watch. But I'm glad I did. There was one character that befriended me. And that kind of opened the door. And I felt comfortable. And then all of a sudden, I was pulled into stories because of that relationship. And uh, the more like you said you can do as little or as many as you want you could just sit there like a lump on the couch and watch it all happen around you if you prefer to do it but if 
that's really what you want to do, this might not be for you in all honesty, because the real value in what you're paying for and what you're getting is being part of the movie, being part of the show. Uh, and, and to do that, you have to be proactive. Yeah, I mean, I think that there are certain situations where maybe as a parent or a grandparent, yeah. if you want to sort of step back a little bit and just watch, because there is, there, there is a level of satisfaction in just watching your family enjoy it, right, and have those moments on their own. Um, Tim says, th this is a great question. You live a few minutes away. Did you feel transported, especially when visiting Batu? <laughs> When you're in, you're in. Um, you use sort of the, the Vegas analogy. I, I mean, and I think for some people that might even be either they, they can't relate or sometimes even off-putting, but it's this passing through the portal and getting onto that ship and forgetting that you're in Central Florida. He mentions Batu, and I, we talked about on the show how I was somewhat dismissive of, well, why am I going to... I live near Batu, right? I can go anytime I want. Why am I going to take you know, a sea day or a, a port day and go to Batu, But we spent more time and more time on the app and enjoyed Batu in ways that I have never done before. Um, it was such an important part of the experience. And again, we talked about the, the brilliant integration of what happens on the Star Cruiser impacting what happens on Batu and vice versa. Dan, what I about you? I think the coolest you, thing... Yeah. I think the coolest thing about it is that I love Galaxy's Edge. When I was on the Star Cruiser, I felt like I was on Batu. When I'm a guest at Walt Disney World, I feel like I'm at Galaxy's Edge, and Batu is the name of where I am. But I really felt like I was living that, especially because a lot of the guests that are aboard the ship with me were in were in costume. We're still in character. The cast members are still in character, and then the the cast members on Batu interact with you differently because you've got you know, your, your special magic band and you've got that pin on your shirt and they know that this is a very different experience for you. And I, you know, I'm glad you brought that Vegas thing up again. Cause to me, let's be super clear. This is as family friendly as you could possibly imagine. It is, it's dynamic. It's wonderful. Becky, what about for you? Cause even Dave Rashoni asking the same thing. How, how is the port adventure? Cause I was like, Oh, I'm just going to stay on board the ship. Yeah. Like I don't want to waste my time. And I'm so happy that I did. Yeah, at, at first the, the the thought process was, uh, it's a cruise. We're we're going to Nassau. I'm staying on board, you know, because I've been there, done it, got the T-shirt, and really didn't feel like I needed to go, um, because thinking I could stay on board and I could take more pictures or I could do stuff on board and figure out what's what's happening there because they do serve lunch. They do have some things that are going on, but. I'm glad we didn't because there was a couple of clues for us that was kind of made it important for us to go to Batu. And when we started picking up on the story and realizing this is a big part of the experience, this is just as much of it, the experience uh, as, as being on the star cruiser to go into Batu and to talk to the citizens there and to partake in the attractions because there's some important pieces to that. And we're, completely trying to be spoiler free here so i'm going to be careful but it was important and then i started doing missions that well, there was one after another after another and i was getting so excited i didn't want to leave i wanted another mission um and before we knew it four hours had gone by and we'd gone in different directions because we were all answering things differently so there's a point in time where i was like oh I have to go over here. And then Nicholas would say, I got to go there too. And then Lou would go, uh, I got to go over here. And of course, Deanna was, I have to be way over there in a another camp somewhere. <laughs> and then we would separate for a few minutes, but then it would, it would bring us back together too. So I would highly say treat Batu. It, it's a whole different experience. So treat it like just as an important piece of the story as being on the Star Cruiser. Again, like a without, whole new world. Yeah. Well, because even, yeah. and again, not to spoil anything, but even your experience on things like Smuggler's Run are different. And it also makes sense. Like, I had this sort of aha moment, like, why you do something on Smuggler's Run and how it pays dividends when you get back on the ship. When that moment happened, I'm internally, like, just clapping. I'm like, that's brilliant. Like, it was just brilliant. And I don't know if you, yeah. I didn't learn this until somebody shared this with me today. 
in addition to some of the missions that you get on Batu, do you know that there is a mission that you can get where you literally need to recover a physical item and bring it back to the ship? I did know that. I watched that happen. And not only that, but if you go no. to Oga's, there's something special you get for going to Oga's. Yeah, yeah which he can book is, by the way, is yeah. part of your, um, when you book it, as part of the adventure, you can actually make a, an Oga's reservation. So That's that right. helps you. But but if you don't get it, don't worry. It's It's just a piece of the pie. But I didn't know about this whole thing that you get and take back. What I it's a really? like, and not I mean like a little it's, it's crazy. Not like a cookie or a pin. Like it is a big thing that you need to bring back with you that has a I have to remember that later importance. We didn't see it. We yeah, didn't see it. It was Somebody it was loaded it. on the transport with us when we went back to on the ship oh, and it was cool. hard to miss. <sighs> Bummer. Right? So there's some going of that back. repeatability totally going back. factor yeah. that that goes uh debbie anderson said what time does on the first night do things officially wind down um a lot later than i expected I 11 guess, I guess I, around 11 I think sort it was of like... the activities and stuff but the ship is still active like the sublight lounge is open there's snacks in the atrium i think they said until two o'clock in the morning um i tapped out relatively ish early but i'm sure dan you were probably not the only person wandering the halls late at night no, it was open. I was up till two or three in the morning in the Subway Lounge, uh, talking to people, taking pictures, just enjoying the music. Uh, snacks were available at all hours of night. As much Katsaka's kettle as you could possibly fit into your mouth, which is great for me because I think that's the best <laughs> popcorn on the planet. And I feel like it never winds down. There are always people pleasant and chatting with you. And there's always, depending on where you are in orbit in the galaxy, there are different announcements and things that are going on throughout the ship too. And you can see depending on where you're looking on the ship, port, starboard, or whatever, you'll see different plants. Like when you're by Batu, you can see Batu mm -hmm. through the port. It's amazing. Yeah. There, there is no and, and, detail that's left. Yeah. And in all honesty, I could talk to the droid in my room for hours. So <laughs> I think I returned back to the room and it was about 11 or 11.15 and spent about 30 minutes just working with the, the droid. That was kind of cool. Uh, Kenyon Thayer says, can you get a cast member to break character? Absolutely not. They no. are nope. as invested in this experience as the guests are. And I think, and not just the characters, right? Sort of the, the, the cast, but even the crew themselves is much like on Batu. They are all in on, and I think loving the, uh, the ability to craft their own story, have their home planet, and, you know, we talk about living your own Star Wars adventure and your Star Wars story, but that's really what they get to do, too. Everybody, merchandise, uh, food. Did you get the uh, flamethrower, by the way? Did you find that? Did you see the flamethrower in the... Uh, I merchandise? had to ship it like I did when we went to Galaxy's Edge. It was expensive, but worth it. Yeah. <laughs> the kids love it. <laughs> um. Matthew Woolley says, how is it for littles? Uh, five years old. I thought he was talking about my height. Do they miss out on anything? I heard they can't do lightsaber training. Dan, I, I'm, I want to hear your thoughts because I, I do think that there is probably an age range, depending on your child, where not only might they get the most out of it, but you almost as a parent don't want to be distracted from certain things by having to tend to maybe a younger child. I sort of put the age around... 10 years old or so where they would get a lot out of it. And so would you, um, you said you went with your family. How old, uh, is your child? And, and where do you think sort of that, that there is no right age, which sort of that right age range. Would sure. Be? The wheelhouse. Uh, Mason is eight and he was, a, he did everything he did. I mean, I think he taught a bunch of people even how to play Sabak. He did everything, but there were families with us. There is a family that has a YouTube channel and their little kids were probably four and five, three and four, and they did everything. They were in a lot of the groups as us. They did, they did the lightsaber stuff, uh, the, some of the other things, parts of that they couldn't do, but they were actively a part of everything. I, no one felt left out. And then in the finale, after the amazing finale, they were bawling because it was over. I mean, they were actually bawling. And it would be, I, think so it really I, I, mean, I don't know. I, I think you just go by your own kids themselves and you know, you know what they like. You take them to the park. You take them to the local carnival. You kind of know their threshold. Mm -hmm. But I never saw anything limited. 
Yeah, I, I saw a couple of families with little ones that had them flung over their shoulder, half asleep or asleep, and they, you could tell that dad wanted to stay up and keep going. Mom was like, oh, everybody's tired. Let's all go to bed. So I think there was a little bit of a, an issue for some families, but again, I think it depends on the kids. I really think you're talking about Lou, aren't you? No, I'm laughing Are you because gonna tell, you're going to tell the story, aren't you? Because there may or may not have been a family with, with some very young children seated right next to us at dinner. And the kids were, you know, they, they weren't having it. Becky loved it. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> wait a minute. She's let's let's like, remember the freaking airlock. Like, <laughs> I literally but think she said, remember, put that kid in the airlock. <laughs> that would have been a great idea. Um, no, anyway. <laughs> Not spent travel, everybody. Kidding. For all your family I'm kidding. vacation <laughs> I seem to remember show. you. I seem to remember you looking back over your shoulder a couple of times. Because oh, your, see that, your face, that one. I could tell, <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, like, Dad, you've got to get this kid out of here. It's going gonna, it's gonna <laughs> to get very... Yeah, it's going to be like a scene from Walmart in here in about two minutes. So I would have that child removed <laughs> instantly. Wow. Um, Christine Morrison said, oh. I'm worried about that they wouldn't have gluten-free food choices. The food worries me. Um, not at all. Don't. So when I did the preview, there were two people at my table. One was vegan. One was gluten-free. They had like readily available options for both. Another friend of mine has an allergy to food coloring. And was very surprised that most of the food uses natural food colorings, so there was not an issue for them. Excuse me. So, like anywhere in Walt Disney World, they have a lot of these options readily available. And I did notice on the website that if you do have certain special dietary requirements, like at Disney, you can email ahead of time to make sure they have a certain type of meal. If you need kosher or whatever it might be. So I don't think I don't you think can, this is an issue at you all. You can go between one to four in the Chandrilla um, into the dining area, and you can talk to the chefs. But our son has an egg allergy, and just it's Disney, so it doesn't matter if you're in space. So anywhere, every chef will come out and talk to us, map it out for us, uh, tell you everything you could eat, what they told you not to have. They accommodated everything. I mean everything. I mean I think that's the best place in the world to go if you've got an allergy or any kind of food aversion of any kind, or even if you're like. You know what? I don't like onions. Okay, here's stuff without onions. I saw that happen too. Yeah. Well, let's just talk a minute about the quality of the food. I mean, it, it exceeded my expectations. I was thinking that it was going to be along those lines of theme park food, right? With a little bit of space theming, space nuggets, <laughs> space, space donuts. But it really was an elevated dining experience as well as um, being completely uh, creative. And I was really impressed with not only the offerings on the buffets, but dinner. Dinner was like going to a five-star restaurant, mm -hmm. the way that everything was plated and presented. I was, and we talked about this on the show, but I was very, very pleasantly surprised that it was not, you know, purple space hamburgers and, like especially that that first night meal, I've I've had more than one dream about those bao buns. Oh, <laughs> those are so and the, good! And the tip yip with the buttery noodles. Oh, my goodness, the tip yip was so good. The only here's my only complaint: they need like variable size of the trays for breakfast and lunch because you can only stack your sort of bento thing so high. I just need a much larger, wider, like a trolley. I need a little trolley. No, you just go just... back. You could just, you so just fill it, it starts, once. That starts you to eat it, like exercise. you get up, you go back, you put more on, and then you go back, and then you eat that, and then you, it's not meant for you to have like a stack this high of trays. Don't judge Well, me. for people worried about working out, take those trays around the dining area a couple times. Those babies are heavy. <laughs> That was it was brilliant though the whole bento yeah. box scenario and the oh you can the put them size. all in together you can organize yeah, while you're eating sizes. I love that and the OC like the <laughs> yeah, OC and people like yeah it's it is um <laughs> I, I I think that is just such a brilliant concept that I hope yeah. and almost expect to translate in in other parts of Walt Disney World um very Ooh, quick I, question I like some of these. Paul Clark says do they have TVs with regular programming in your room is it all Star Wars themed the interface is Star Wars themed, but it, but it's exactly the same as what you get in a resort room. 
spoiler alert, you're not going to be sitting in your room watching TV. You may pop it on no. in the morning while you're getting dressed and to fall asleep out of exhaustion. You're only, it's only, you're only going to be on for a, a couple of minutes. Um, that actually Dan, brings up a good point, though. Uh, my wife, uh, she's like, after a while, th during the second day, we got back from Batu. She's like, I'm going to tap out for a little bit. So she went to the resort. She watched a biography on Abraham Lincoln for a couple hours, and <laughs> Mason and I played Sabak. So you, that's there if you want it. All right. Um, Dan, this question is specifically from you, from Stan Solo. It's his real name. Did you notice the Crimson Dawn logo on the floor in the atrium and the gift shop? I'm sure that you did. Nice. I did. Oh, uh, yeah, Stan, that's a great catch. There's a lot of great Easter eggs there. Uh, Matt Martin and the team at Lucasfilm have gone to spare no expense uh, visually for all the cool things that are out there for you to enjoy. Yeah, and we we touched on <clears throat> them just a little bit in terms of them being there and sort of alluded to a few, and I'm sure that there are dozens more that just haven't been caught as yet. Um, here's a question for the two of you. Uh, Becky, then Tim... And then I'd like to answer as well, too. If you could, and Becky, I know <laughs> you already are, how how soon would you do it again? Yeah, so let, let me explain this really quickly. <clears throat> we 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 paid for ourselves to go on the maiden voyage. That that was something that, that was not comped by Disney. You did the one day experience uh, from from the media side where you were able to go, and that was comped, right? <clears throat> the Disney is allowing me to go on another voyage uh, from them. They're going to go ahead and, and let me uh, go experience it. And I set mine for July. So I'm going to go back in July. Uh, I figured that that would give it enough time for them to test and adjust anything that they felt that they might need to. Uh, but in all honesty, the money thing, obviously, is an issue, so I'd have to save up for it again if I was going to pay for it again. But I really want to do – I want to answer the questions differently. I want to talk to a different character. I want to see what happens if I do it a different way. So um, I would be fine to go back. I, I wouldn't do a back-to-back. -back. It would kill me. It would literally <laughs> kill me. But uh, but give it a you know three months between is probably doable, I would say. No, uh, Disney hosted uh, me for the entire thing, two nights, three days, uh, the whole family. And I am absolutely putting my money where my mouth is. I do think it's worth it. Uh, would I would I advocate for people to go into debt for a vacation? Well, no, I wouldn't advocate going into debt for any anything, right? So that's why you have someone like Becky who can help you budget that out and make that work for you and your family. I mean, that's, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back. Uh, the soonest, I think, is the summer 2023. But if look, if time opens up, I'm already putting money aside for this anyway. I would do it monthly if I could. I'm serious. I I love it. I absolutely love it. Mason, when we walked off, he says, "Can we live here?" I'm like, "You know what? I'm a teacher. I can just homeschool you. Let's do it, baby." <laughs> Dan, I think you and I should do it together. We share a room. It's like a buddy comedy, and just live stream the whole. Oh, thing. that would be hilarious. <laughs> that would be fun. That would be absolutely you can have, hilarious. You can have the top bunk. Yay. Um, <laughs> This is a great question. Debbie Anderson says, does your previous status on the Play Disney app transfer onto the ship and grow, or does it start new, and did the ship status stay after the cruise? Great question. Your earnings, your status, your um, the, the things that you've earned on the Play Disney app in, in Galaxy's Edge absolutely transfer over. All the things that you've achieved are there, and then all the achievements afterwards follow you along as well. Um, this experience gave me a, a much greater and deeper appreciation for that app, specifically the way it is designed for your time on Batu. Couldn't have said it better myself. You should do a podcast. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about so, starting one. I was going to say, some of the badges, um, you know, came over because you're working with the play app. Badges. But, uh, we don't need those stinking badges. You do badges. need badges. We, we needed stinking <laughs> And the funny part is, is the, the person that had like 12 or 13 badges was Deanna. All the rest of, of us are going, I only have three. Where, where, what have you been doing? So, <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Traitor. Yeah. She's not even yeah. here, but I'm yelling at her, calling her a traitor anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. I can't, I, again, we're not going to spoil anything, but I kept hearing about a romance that happens. Do you know about that? Mm. 
Um, I'm assuming that you mean in between characters and not in between guests. There, yeah, there was a there Jeez, was a, a, so. there was a video on the on the Disney Parks blog uh, that um, made people concerned about their, what, a romance between major characters in the Star Wars universe. Um, I'm not going to spoil anything, but I feel like the status quo is the way it needs to be. And that's coming from the Star Wars expert. So uh, I am so happy that my friend Kevin Shea asks this question and begins with a simple single word. Merchandise. Were there any specific must haves or special collector figures <laughs> or toys? Kevin, you know, they're not toys. They're collectibles. I, I want to just quickly answer this because I'm. I've been purging for two years. Like I've been trying to get things out of my house, but there are some things that are just must haves. I came prepared for this question, Kevin. I came prepared for you. Um, the let you, I'm sure. Uh... Dad. <laughs> from the fir from the moment that I held it in my tiny little alligator arms, I knew that this is what I needed. This is a special exclusive lightsaber to the Halcyon that comes not just with the hilt in the case, but with uh, all the letters of the alphabet in Arabesh that you can put onto your hilt. So it really does become your own. So you see, you've got your little thing there. Um, and I came prepared. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's creepy. That's that's really creepy. <laughs> and I see your never mind. Um <laughs> <laughs> Becky for any specific merchandise mm -hmm. for Becky was yes, everything in the shop, please. Yes. It was easy uh, and hard because I wanted everything but I know I can't have everything. So I had to spend my money wisely. Lone but they star. had I see your Schwartz. Is great. Sorry. <laughs> you must have been on a different cruise. <laughs> yeah, no a doubt. Spaceballs adventure. Space Spaceballs, the Galactic Star Cruiser. <laughs> um, <laughs> they had everything from pins to coffee mugs to the shield to that to jewelry to pens and notebooks and pretty much. Yeah, when you walked into Spaceballs and it was like Spaceballs, the merchandise, it it was all laid out in front of you. Oh, you've got the coffee mug. Ooh, and there's the shield. Oh, you bought the shield. Which, uh, this is yeah, my we, son's we both shield, bought the but... shields. Wait, what? You it's, stole the shield no, from it's your my, son. I, I stole it for tonight's purposes, but it's my son's. <laughs> which means it's yours. Um, but the thing that I really loved uh, was the fact that you could buy some costumes there too. So if you got there, there were some people who were dressed to the nines in, in full makeup and full headdress. And at dinners at night, they were in full regalia. It was just gorgeous. Some of us are running around in, you know, pants or jeans and a t-shirt. Um, but if you kind of regret that and you get there, and you go, you know what? I kind of like to get in this a little bit more. You can buy a tunic. You can buy some robes. There's uh, things available to you if you want to get farther in the story. Personally, I was going to get it, and then they were so heavy and hot, yeah. and we were just running around like crazy. I was already sweating. I dug so that decided blue tunic. not to. I, I, yeah, I dug it that was blue really tunic, cool. Uh, which you can also buy before your voyage. If you're, if you're planning a voyage on the house, and they do have house yeah. specific merchandise on Shop Disney. So you can have it even before you get there and just, you know, do your thing. As long as you're using the same email that you have in your in your uh, your My Disney Experience account, it will show up in the shop Disney. I bought I bought everything. I bought the Legacy lightsaber. <laughs> I bought the, the droid builder of SK-62. I bought the action figure. I bought a number of image, uh, models of the Halcyon. I bought all the magic pans you could possibly get. Coffee <laughs> mugs, T-shirts. Yeah. I went wild. And don't we're gonna I, we were gonna tread lightly here and don't we'll we'll have this conversation offline, but are you aware of the super secret merchandise item that is not publicly known? Yes, be I careful. I think so. All right, we'll talk after I think so. <laughs> I, 
That's definitely a spoiler. Do not go there. It's a, it's a there. huge spoiler, and it's the coolest. And and I don't. We don't mean to be evasive, but we have to because we don't want to ruin it. But when you have these, like, you talk about wow moments. It was my daughter that found out, and there is something that happens that surrounds this acquisition of the merchandise item, and it just makes it even cooler. It just makes it even cooler. That's really cool. Um, Moving on. <laughs> I know. Uh, are there There's a ton <laughs> of great questions in here. Yeah. Are there frequent flyer discounts or repeat trips? No. No, there's not. I wish. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I don't know. Mouse and Travel might have something later. Jason <gasps> says, if only there was someone, oh. anyone, who would take me on the Star Cruiser, um, your Mouse Fan Travel agent can help you get there. Um, will an introvert, well, I think we talked about this, will an introvert really be able to enjoy the experience and get a lot out of it? Yes, but I think allowing yourself to sort of break out of your shell a little bit will make your experience even better. My bad. wife's an introvert and she loved it. She loved yeah. every second of it. Julie says, I see lots of stairs. How does someone in a wheelchair or scooter get around? Um, there were a lot of people in ECVs and mm -hmm. some in wheelchairs. There's elevators everywhere. Um, so every and, and all of the um, the rooms and the dining room have ramps and are accessible. So space and is a very accessible place. I even place. spotted, yeah, remember uh, one of the cast members that was there was actually in a wheelchair and he traversed the entire thing. So it's it's made for that. Uh, did you, oh, so Dan, did you give yourself a backstory before you got on board? Like, did you sort of have a story ready or did you just sort of wing it and I'm Dan from wherever you're from? Yeah, I am. Yeah. I'm from Bet Two. Uh, no, I I, I I winged it. I just winged it. I just I just improved it. I mean, I'm a teacher, my day job anyway, so I I'm, I really like kind of thinking off the cuff. Anyway, I think it makes for a more organic experience for me, and that's what I like. But other people I know prepared very in depth backstory, so and it's there for you to to offer it. Or if you don't have anything planned, it really won't matter because they'll just bring you in anyway. There's a couple yeah. of really good questions. Um, room for only four. What if a suggestion for families of five? So, oh. Becky, I think you said that the the regular state room only sleeps four, but the suite, the, the first, the, the no. one bedroom suite can sleep five. Actually, no. The uh, standard cabins can sleep four or five. Some of them are com can accommodate five. It's got a, an additional fold out uh, trundle bed in some of the cabins so four or five the one bedrooms only sleep four and then the um captain's suite that we had sleeps up to eight so you can get a family of five in a standard cabin uh can you dress or cosplay in batu so one of the things we saw and, and i had a couple of friends who were on board that went full out like they did like a sokatano makeup they were orange and had the whole headdress on and the, the the only difficulty is making sure you don't get mistaken for an actual character because your costumes are that good but they do allow you and i, and I think they really almost encourage you to get dressed up um not only when you're on board but when you go to batu as well as long as you don't have a, um, a mask that covers your face yeah i think you're good to go well, there was someone on the cruise with us that she had her face painted and her body, and she had fangs. They let her walk wow. around and do everything. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, we, um, of course, there was also someone I dressed like a Doctor Who, and I'm like, you are on the wrong, I mean, it's I cool, and I dig it, but I think you, you got on the wrong bus. Um, <laughs> did it feel crowded, and how many people per excursion? Kevin, this is a, another great question, and, and part of the beauty of the Star Cruiser is it is small by design, I never felt, even in places like the Atrium, when uh, an orientation or the finale show is going on and everybody's there, no place ever felt crowded. In fact, there was a lot of places that you'd be walked to and rooms were empty. I mean, they were literally like devoid of people completely, including like I loved, my daughter loved the climate simulator. You would often go there and there would be nobody there at all. Yeah, we, we got lucky because uh, the, the voyage I was on, it was about only half capacity, so we could really explore. But uh, from what I've heard and what you both have said, and, and there's so much to do, and your your cruise is set up so beautifully that you have, you're asked to go different places throughout the entire three-day experience. So 
you're never going to be except for the ending perhaps in the beginning you're not all going to be in the same place at the same time anyway and it's it's plenty big enough that you can walk around and not bump into people on the stairwells and things like that yeah the the um they they have a hundred uh cabins on board so that kind of tells you where the where the number could lie depending on how many people you have in there and somebody had asked about um solo if it's okay to go solo but it's just like a cruise you're going to pay for the the full um the, the full amount for two guests if you go by yourself so make some friends um i did not feel crowded <clears throat> i'm i'm a big claustrophobic so it's some of those locations where we were all together one place um there was some spots that I just kind of had to move out to the side to feel comfortable, but I didn't feel like it was so jam packed that I couldn't, you know, move backwards or forwards. I need a wide berth. Give me space. Wow. Um, <laughs> wow. Do I know of anybody who left Batu <laughs> and went to galaxy's edge to other parts of the studios? Theoretically you can. I mean, it, it's a waste to do that. It is an absolute waste of your time and your money to leave Batu to go ride slinky dog dash. Yeah, you can, but I don't know. Like you said, I don't think you'll want to because you'll be too busy doing the missions and becoming immersed in this planet that feels more like a real planet because of the Star Cruiser. And that's the thing I don't think people are ready for is that you get immersed in this story and you don't want to step out of it. You are, you've got a mission to do. You've got things that have to be accomplished. You've got places to be and, and characters to meet. I don't think you would want to leave. Mm -hmm. Uh, when should you be back on the ship? Uh, Tracy, you do not want to miss. It's like a cruise. You don't want to miss the Disney magic pulling away from port. You don't want to miss the Halcyon. And I believe all aboard is four o'clock somewhere four. around there. It's between one yeah. o'clock and four o'clock is your arrival time. And we were back on the ship so much later than I expected. I thought we'd pop in, hit rise, get a little Ronto wrap and, you know, be out. Not at all. Yeah, no. Not at no. all. Um, most important question says Jason how does dining work is it like a cruise ship with rotational dining or do you make reservations great question um, breakfast and lunch are open seating you go in I, I think breakfast is from like 7 to 10 somewhere around there and lunch is maybe 11 to 2 uh, you can go in it's open seating again sort of that bento style buffet uh, dinner is like a cruise where you have an early seating and a late seating um, you'll end up getting the same experience in both, um, but that's the only time that you are um, you have an assigned time, and then you'll be brought to a table by um, a crew member. Plus, yeah. there are snacks available all the time, so you'll never go hungry. That's what I was worried about. Like, are there going to be enough snacks? <laughs> um, what did you think, Dan, of specifically dinner time, the entertainment? Because again, I will admit. I was like, oh, there's going to be a singer during dinner. Like, OK, you're going to come in and sing space songs. And let's just I thought Gaia was just remarkably good. She was amazing. She there. I don't know how to say she sings maybe five songs the first night. I think that's about right. But, you know, when, when it started, we were, we were listening and we were nodding our heads and enjoying the atmosphere. By the end of it, everybody in that room was up dancing and clapping and singing along and high-fiving strangers. And it, she was amazing. And she helps you, you know, again, you become a part of this story because of the love and care that is put into it. And it's, it's absolutely tremendous. It really, really is so much fun. Yeah. It's dinner theater. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. The, the level yeah. of entertainment factor from her, the, the show she put on alone, just without the rest of it, that would be worth the price of admission watching her. And when you're in the sublight lounge throughout the, the week or throughout your time, you will hear those songs periodically. And the bartenders have like these dances that they do when certain songs come on. It's great. We talked about on the show. I love the fact that since day one of the opening of Galaxy's Edge, one of Gaia's songs is in the rotation in Oga's Cantina. I'm like, no way. That's great. Oh, wait a minute. Did we just did we just tell something, Dan, something Star Wars that he didn't? I you did. Write, Let me write this down. Somebody put a star on my nerd passport because I just shared. <laughs> <it. laughs> 
I'd say half a star for that one. Listen, let me just have my moment. It's not a lot. You, know, right. you know everything there is to know about Star Wars. So, um, Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, if we're still talking about dining, just – oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I, I, was, I was going to address the, the blue shrimp in the room, which there's so many people that are <laughs> so afraid of the blue shrimp. It's fine. It's it's shrimp. It tastes great. It's just naturally colored blue. Don't worry. It's not going to turn your your mouth blue. Everything's good. It's awesome. And it tastes you know, shrimpy. Are people... we talking about? We're we talking about blue shrimp. Are we talking about Bruno or is that a no go? <laughs> Yikes. No. Anyway, somebody so... <laughs> take a star from Dan. Get his passport and yeah, take a yeah, star away for that. But but I know a lot of people are are somewhat. Um, skeptical about it, especially for people who are picky eaters lou will tell you i am an official picky eater <laughs> and <laughs> my my um ability to order in a restaurant can go on for five minutes for things that need to be removed and or added so it was great i loved the flavors there were a couple of dishes that were maybe a little too spicy for me but not that you know everything was wonderful and it, again when you sit down to dinner, it's a five course meal. So if there's something that you don't like, there's more food. Don't worry. So I, I think the pick eaters would be good at, at this experience. Dan, did you have a favorite item, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or snack wise, that you were like, wow, this is the this is the one that I, I'm going to keep going back for thirds and fourths of? Oh yeah, and when you go in that sublight lounge, just part, when you when you want to find me, that's where I'm going to be. The Mustafarian tuber chips with that sauce and then the green beans, you take, oh, you yeah. combine them together along with uh, that, the cheese spread that comes out when you lift the glass and it kind of smokes <laughs> yeah. up and you can smell it instantly. Is something on fire? No, you're just about to have the best cheese you've ever had in your life. So any of those three things, if you want to trap me in a rabbit cage, put one of those three things in there. That's where I'll be. <laughs> All right, give him his star back. This is why we're friends. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to be back. Yeah, because the food wasn't just, you know, I don't want to sort of belabor this, but the food didn't just look good, but everything that I had was delicious. Like, I, I really, you know, there was maybe one dessert. I just, okay, it, it wasn't just to my liking. But even the stuff at breakfast, uh, Becky mentioned it, or that, that sort of puffed waffle grilled cheese with the dippers and the tip yeah. dip at lunch. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. so good. And yeah, that, and don't pass by the cheese. hot chocolate. Oh, that was really good. That little grilled cheesy yeah. thing that you dipped into the tomato yeah. sauce. It was great. And Amazing. and the hot chocolate was probably the best hot chocolate I've had in my entire existence. I missed the it hot chocolate so mission. Good. It was I didn't so know that. good. I did not get the hot chocolate. Yeah, and then mission. if you go to the bar and ask for some Baileys, you put some Baileys in the hot chocolate. It's amazing. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Listen, you want to have a you want a, a, a great side mission. Go with Becky to some place that serves alcohol, and you'll have like the whole <laughs> when Harry met Sally moment. I want a drink, but I want it extra sweet. I don't want this, but I like this. Can you tell me what's sweet, but not too sweet? But <sighs> okay. In the space, funny part no is, is I thought you were scream. kidding. Wow. So <laughs> there was, I I always thought that you were kidding me when you said that, and then I will admit I watched when Harry met Sally on a plane, and I went, yeah, he yeah, he might right. be a little right, <laughs> but not that right. Just you don't. Peter says, I would just, man, I would just sit in a hallway and cry in happiness just to be there. Um, you would not be That's alone. You, you would not be alone. Um, let's see. Let me quite quickly go through. Oh, so what did you think, Dan, and, and how much did you get a chance to interact with D309 in your stateroom? Like, I almost wish I had more time and more energy in the morning at night to to really sort of put D309 through her paces. We we spoke with D3 when we got there, before we went to bed, when we woke up, when we got back from bed too, before we went to bed, and then we told told D3 good night. Or good, you know, thanks for the great journey. So, yeah, that that's a whole experience in and of itself. The the AI on this is unbelievable. Yes. I mean, I can't even tell you like we tried variations of similar answers, uh but she had different things to say to us for different things. And if you just wanted to uh, not even talk about missions, then she just keep things very, very vague. It's really a, a feat of engineering, I think. I was incredibly impressed at the quality and the depth of the AI. And like the data pad itself, she is very tied into 
not just the overarching story that's going on throughout the day, but your individualized story. So missions that you have, the paths that you're starting to take, the choices that you've made, she has access to those and will have conversations with you about it. So there is a there's a novelty aspect of it, but there's also an information and there's a storytelling aspect to it as well. I was incredibly impressed at just how well it worked. Yeah, I would have loved to have spent more time talking with her. Uh, what was great, though, one one night we talked for 20 minutes and she kind of said, OK, I've got to get back to my I wore out and talking. And <laughs> she she said, OK, so would you like a, a, a bedtime story or a lullaby? And so one night I got a bedtime story. and The next night I got a lullaby. It was actually a ton of fun. I loved it. Yeah, there was lots of weird sounds coming out of Becky's room. Anyway, I've never. Brian says oh, I've never been to Galaxy's Edge before. <laughs> Will there be enough time to build a lightsaber, go to Oga's Cantina, etc.? I would honestly say no and yes. So I don't yeah. know that I would book a Savi's workshop reservation for my time on the Galactic Star Cruiser. Like if you have a pre or post in Walt Disney World, I would do it then. You can go to Oga's. I suggest going to Oga's. Dan showed what you can get as a guest by going to Oga's. Um, you're not there for very long. It's a nice sort of respite out of the heat and the running around to get a little snack and, and drink as well. I I honestly think you should do it, but I think you gotta you gotta get up. You gotta be on that first uh, ship uh, leaving the Star Cruiser to get to Batu. Get there as soon as you possibly can. Get as early as a reservation as you can so you can do everything else. We do get a lightning lane pass for Smuggler's Run and for Rise of Resistance. So you may have to be of the mindset, hey, I may miss a couple of other missions, but I get to build a lightsaber. Because I still think that's the most treasured thing that Disney's ever done mm -hmm. for fans. Yeah. I mean, I did that with both of you for the first time. There's still controversy over who built the red lightsaber, right. but we won't get you into that now. No, no, let's that get into it right now. Totally let's just... It was Listen, totally Lou. Dan, it was wait, totally Lou. How do I mute Becky? I a, uh, how does this thing no, work? Wait no. Wait, I can do this. Don't. Oh, no, wait, wait. I think I can know how to do this. No. Hold on a second. Wait. Do not. <laughs> wait. Don't. Oh, don't. Wait. Got... No, God. Oh, God. Great. Got it. <laughs> can I please tell? Can I no, please wait a that second. Question? Hold on. No, I'm going to do I'm going to figure this out. Can wait. you can make a reservation? There we go. All right. Quiet, Becky. Um. It, it, I know this says Becky Mankin. Don't worry about that. Did you meet me or did you get rid of me? You're gone. Can you actually You're hear me? You're in the green room. You've oh, literally good. Been oh, you can hear me. So. <laughs> <laughs> Dan's here. Right. Don't go. Don't I let her you threaten right you. Don't let her. I really hate dark, you right now. <laughs> enchantress Sith ways oh scare you. Tell the story about the building of the lightsabers and why she said, Be very careful, they won't Dan. let me build two. You have to build a red one for me and take a picture. I did not say that. I, uh, I mean, maybe I remember it differently, but <laughs> we were all standing there together and Lou was like, you know, I'm going to wait. I'm going to do this with my son. I want this to be a special memory for me and my son. And she's like, no, you got to do it. Come on, just do it. And you can just build one and I'll, and I'll, and just make a red one for me. Isn't that Thank what she said? Much. That's all. That's all I needed. Good night, everybody. Give I love you, Becky, but stars. I love the truth more. I'm, I'm a God fearing man. I got to tell the truth. <laughs> nope. <laughs> That's not how, well, all right. So now you're calling kind of my helmet. friend a liar. Not exactly. Nice. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> wow. I'm going to, now can I actually ask, an, ugh, answer the question now no. that you've had your fun? I don't know, we're moving on. And then we're going to tell the story. There's the other story. So as part of your reservation, you can make a reservation at Oga's and you can make a reservation at Savi's too. So that's something you can do as part of your booking on board the, the Star Cruiser. So, you know, since we're into funny stories right now, just really quickly, Let me go back would you to like Dan. to tell them? Let me go them... back to Dan again here. Um... No. <laughs> would you like to tell them about um, the family who was chosen to put the first uh, Star Cruiser it, it, into space? It's called hyperspace. Yes, I know. Oh, cool. I like your <laughs> Would you story. like to tell the story? No, I'd like you to tell go the ahead, story. Luke. No, no, I want you to tell <laughs> No, story. no. No, it's it's so Alani. It's 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 just totally you. Oh, that part of the story. That oh, I see. I yes. see the part of the story you want me to tell. Not the. It's not just the joy. And look, we talk about special moments, right? And there's there are special moments cool. made for guests throughout. And 
Dan, I'm sure you can attest, whether it was your name that was called or earring, earring, even just having a character call out somebody else by name and saying, Lou, you need to come over here. Becky, you need to go do this. Dan, come with me. We need to go to the engineering room. There are all these special moments. We were very fortunate to be given a very, very special yeah, moment. And, and I guess I never, I didn't really think about it this way until right now. It's, it is a one-of-a-kind special moment where we were sort of selected as the ship was, was leaving space dock port on the first day to go onto an empty... Oh, I'm going to cry. <laughs> I know, go, so I thought you would want to tell the story. Stop it. <laughs> to go on to Three an shot. empty bridge, to go onto the empty bridge and pull the lever. Don't pull the lever. To pull the lever... To put it's stupid. I know it's so stupid. Like the ship doesn't really go into hyperspace, but to pull the it's like being on Smuggler's Run for the first time, and you want to be yeah. in that right side pilot seat, and so you can pull that lever and make that happen. Like, come on, man. What kid, whether you watch Star Wars in seventy seven, eighty seven, or two thousand seven, what kid didn't imagine pulling that lever and sending a ship into hyperspace? Um, I know I'm an idiot. I cry at everything. Well, hey, I, I, I guess I'm in, the, I'm in the idiot club, too, because I'm the same way. I don't know what we did or who we talked to, but as when we first board, they took take us to the room. And when you come back, you're, you know, doing the first muster or whatever. And we were talking to people and somehow somebody selected us and pulled us off to the side. And we went in there and everybody turned around and all of us grabbed the, the handle it may not have moved the way they wanted it to, but we sure tried. Um, but that was really special. We were the first the first family to put the, the ship in hyperdrive from revenue. Hyperspace. Perspective. The hyperdrive is the uh, device that helps to operate the... Yeah. But, but Dan, unfortunately, they, they, um, when, they asked, when they asked me about, you know, so what, what's your family name? And I said the Mongello and Mankin family. Is exactly what I said. It's the Mongello and Mankin family, and they had it in front of them because they they had it on the TV and everything. The Mongello and Mankin family. They were it was they had it, and so they introduced us, and they said, "All right, everybody, look in the bridge. There's this family that's been specially chosen to put us in the hyperspace. It's the Mankin family," and so oh. it took me right back to Lonnie. I'm cry again because so... you just ruined the moment for me, but that's okay. It's fine. <laughs> We're all family. We're all. What did I say? You leave. You you go into space as friends, and you come out as family. Um, Luis Ramos says, yes. "Can you find a lightsaber for Puppet Princess Becky?" Um, yes, it's, oh, it's wow. a development. You right got now. rid of the puppet long ago. Mm, no, she's you, in there. You like um, invade. In, in my where? understanding is where. okay. So, oh, uh, there's a question about uh, <laughs> lunch on Port Day. Uh, yes, you you do receive admission to Galaxy's Edge. Actually, if you like you said, if you want all of Hollywood Studios, don't go to Hollywood Studios. Uh, and lunch is included. You are given basically credits on your M band or your Magic band. So if you go to Docking Bay or Rontos, um, you have a credit for an oh, it's like it an entree. It's a Disney dining credit. And I here's a tip that some people may not be aware of, but when we did it, uh, Mason is a child, but we ordered him an allergen menu that happened to be from the adult menu. And they said, actually, this isn't covered. Uh, they ended up fixing it for us and reimbursing it. But they said, because uh, Mason is a child, you have to get a kid's meal for him and adult meals for everybody else. Good to know. Um, so Michelle says, did you find it exhausting? It sounds exhausting to me. My answer is yes, but in the most wonderful way. Um, it, this is not, do not be fooled. This is not a relaxing vacation. You are not going there to kick your, I mean, you can if you want to hang out in your stateroom, but that's not what you're going for. And I, I don't think that's honestly what you're paying for. Um, I, I think if you're looking for a place to just sort of put your feet up and read a book, there are, there are better value accommodations to go do that. Um, I think it is, it can be exhausting, but it, again, it, it's part of what I loved about it. When I first got on the ship, they looked at all of us in the face and they said, get ready to play. And that's what you do. You play and you play and you don't stop until you get off that ship. It is the opposite of relaxing, but it is also the opposite of boring. It's wonderful. It's everything. But if, you know, if you want, when I was a cast member at Disney world many years ago, 
I used to joke with guests, I bet you need a vacation from your vacation because Disney World isn't necessarily relaxing either if you're trying to get all the key stuff or whatever. Uh, but there are ways to do that if you want to. You just put on the Star Cruiser. Don't go trying to relax. Just go to have fun and live Star Wars. Um, Laura Roberts said, <clears throat> excuse me, would it be odd for a solo traveler? So let we'll, we'll take the financial part out because, you know, it, it's per person double occupancy. But Mazel tov, if that's <laughs> if that's how you want to roll. Um, so I went to the media thing as a solo traveler and I did not feel awkward or uncomfortable because by design, you are meant to engage and interact and sometimes work with other guests. So depending, I think, on, on you and your personality, but I would totally do this alone. I would totally do it solo. I would too. You got you have to be ready to chat with other people, but obviously, if you're comfortable enough to go on a vacation by yourself, then that would be no problem for you. Actually, this is a great uh, experience for a solo traveler because you are encouraged to talk to the the cast. You are encouraged to meet the characters, and you're encouraged to meet other guests to accomplish what you need to accomplish. So, I, I think it's actually well um, positioned for a solo traveler. Uh there's a question that we all, I think maybe about halfway through our journey, we, we all said they need to do this with this. And Beth is of the same mindset. Any thoughts on if they would try something like this with, oh. with Avengers? I know it would have to be in California, but dot, dot, dot. Uh, Beth, I absolutely think this is also, in addition to being an amazing experience, it's also a proof of concept. And it's a model that, based on my and I think your experiences, absolutely works. Could you imagine, oy, could you imagine <laughs> if they did something like this themed to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Spider-Man well, was my. Oh, God. Well, <laughs> that was my initial reaction when we first heard about this concept, when they first announced that there was going to be this experience, that this is truly... Uh, a, a disruptor in the travel industry. It's something that a lot of people have maybe thought about or dreamt about, but, you know, Avengers, Harry Potter, can you imagine for those of us who do enjoy the Harry Potter series, being able to go to Hogwarts for a couple of days? Um, it's it, it's open to all kinds of IP Don't to be able to walk. No, I don't have the blade. Wow. <laughs> so it's, it, it's just perfect for any of those situations that you would walk into this world, uh, which it opens up to, like I said, a lot of different IP situations. So, or could you imagine um, if, if they did, I know we have one or two one day themed cruises like Marvel and Star Wars, and you're really scaring me with that. Um, if, if they came up with an entire cruise that was, that was themed around this type of experience. So, I, I think that if Disney proves this to be sustainable and has a good uh, return on investment, you're probably going to see other um, travel industry companies thinking along these lines. Yeah, sign me up. Day one. Sign me up day Same. one for something Marvel themed. Especially if Thor's there. Dude. I was waiting for that. Dude. <laughs> So weird. Would that be so great? Weird. No, not weird. I'm, God, I'm gonna. Not weird. All right, Dan. Really? Back to you again. Um, <laughs> other than That's the awesome. adult beverages, the are there? Um, is any of the food or beverages are an additional cost? Um, other than anything, just alcohol, just alcohol, or any, anything yeah. additional that you buy on Batu. That's really it. Right. Like they lost money on me in terms of food. Clearly, like. The revenue people are going, we miscalculated something. We th There's the Mangello factor in here. I know the stock took a hit when you went on board. I know that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tina Madraski says, how does this compare to a Disney-themed cruise like a Marvel Day at Sea? I, I mean this in the, in the best possible way in that it doesn't. Um, take right. the feeling that you had and how much fun that single day was and then turn that dial way past 11 to like a lot past 11 to like 71 to 77 um 
because it is a, a much, and I, we keep utilizing the same word, and, and I wish I had a thesaurus for something other than immersive, but there is, Tina, you can't, comp it's apples and oranges in terms of the storytelling, the immersion, and the, the creating of your own adventure. Mark Twain had a great comparison. It would be like comparing lightning to a lightning bug. That's about the, sim the same. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, uh, Chris Chapman says, Gaia's Ulashuka is on Rex's playlist, which you can download, I believe, on the Spotify's. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for reminding us of that. Um <laughs> Would the, Stan is very into this, by the way. Would the missions be so much easier if they allowed blasters? By the way, no blasters are allowed on board. You can bring your own lightsaber, but you cannot yes. bring anything that even even resembles a blaster. And blasters, as we know, Stan, are so uncivilized. <laughs> lightsaber is a, is a, more, it's a more civilized weapon, but... Um, let's see... Um, I'd like to see. Do you think anybody stayed on the ship instead of going to Batu? Probably. I'm sure there probably, and I'm sure there are probably some people who didn't spend. You don't have to spend four hours or eight, six hours, whatever is on Batu. You can choose to do as much or as little as you like, and I think that's, yeah. guys. I think that's part of the beauty of this is, the level of activity and participation is absolutely within your control. And if you miss a mission, if you don't fulfill a certain exercise, you don't necessarily get penalized for it or sort of get pushed back at all. You just sort of skip it and then move on to the next thing. It might impact your journey, but it's not going to have a, a negative effect on you anywhere. Yeah, and I think that they are kind of prepared for people to not go into Batu because... Like you said, they, they didn't have activities at that point, but they did still serve lunch on board. They had the snacks still out. They were um, you know, very in tune that the possibility of people were going to stay on board. I think these people are my friends. Lou hasn't shaved in two hours. He's starting to look like a Wookiee. Um... <laughs> Reminds me of a conversation we had on text before the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let me see. Um, I'm just quickly going through. Dan, any other, while I'm looking through any questions, was there anything else about this? If you sort of close your eyes and you think back to your time on the Star Cruiser, were there any other moments or memories that were, were really sort of impactful with you that you take with you when you're done? You know, I... Uh, the lightsaber training was very special just because I've always loved lightsabers since I was a little kid. I mean, we all have. But honestly, just walking aboard the ship and having the the bay doors open and you you get off the launch pod and you step onto that ship and you're looking around and you're thinking, this is my life for the next three days. And you're looking at your family and you're looking at where you're at and you're realizing, I'm in Star Wars. Like I feel like I can get choked up thinking about it now. It was just... I will always try to, that's one of those core memories that is just lodged into my brain because all of us, again, from different backgrounds and personalities, we all were completely swept up into something. And I just can't think of too many things that, you know, I have a family of five and we have a lot of great times together, but to find something that everybody liked uh, in the same kind of a fashion, but for different reasons, it's just very special. I, I feel like that is the genius of this entire project. So, Dan, I want to sort of wrap things up with a question specifically for you that, that Becky and I have talked about really at length on this week's podcast. And it's, you know, it's the $6,000 question, right, to sort of make a, a somewhat antiquated reference. The is it worth it question. I am not going to prompt you at all. You are, you are um, given that question by somebody. How do you answer it? Right. I get it a lot, as you both do, undoubtedly. And what I say is, like I say with anything, you know, I I think it's worth it. For me, it is worth it. I've been a lot of places. I've been around the United States. I've been to Europe. I've been, uh, you know, Canada. I've been to Mexico. I've been a lot of places. I've been to Disney World and Disneyland several, several times. And they're all special to me for different reasons. But this is so unique in and of itself that I think it's a can't miss if you want to try something unique 
with your family that you really can't get anywhere else in the world. As I said earlier on tonight's show, would I go into debt for it? No, but I wouldn't go into debt for any any vacation because I'm going to be smart. I'm going to be savvy. I'm going to save my money. I'm going to budget for it. I'm going to use Becky Mankin and MBI and Mouse Fan Travel to try <laughs> to get the best bang for my buck and to make sure that I am taken care of. And this is an experience that is so worth it for your family. That's why I'm going back again this summer of 2023 because it is, to me, again, it is absolutely worth it when people say well yeah but it's it's expensive well so is a disney vacation when i go on to disney i don't see everything that i want to see at disney world that's why i plan ahead i listen to wdw radio i listen to coffee with kenobi i ask becky and her team and i figure out what is going to be the best way for me to get the most out of my experience that's awesome and dan we could we could talk star wars and galactic star cruiser and halcyon and we'll have to t- have you on again to talk about Kenobi when it comes out? Sure. Uh, maybe in the spoiler support group, Ooh. and then we'll do it uh, here on the live show. If you want to find more Star Wars goodness, head on over to Coffee with Kenobi. It is the podcast you are looking for. Uh, again, Dan too has written and and I guess co-authored a number of Star Wars books as well. You can find probably links to all those things over there and follow Dan on the socials. Uh, I sincerely appreciate both of you being here with me tonight, answering some questions. If you have any more questions that we didn't get to, you can post those over in the clubhouse. I am sure Dan and Becky and I would be happy to answer them. Um, Dan's here, Becky Mankin, Mouse Fan Travel. I love and appreciate you both so very much. And uh, thank you for sharing your Star Wars story and your Star Wars adventure with me. May the Schwartz be with you. I can't help it. Wow. Thank you all so much. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Great. It's always great to be on with you two chuckleheads. I mean, these two, like, I'm telling you, when you hang out with them off camera or off a of mic, it's the same, people. The, these two are as authentic as it comes. I'm really happy to be a part. Thanks so much. It's equally as horrific. So. Yeah. Yeah, I hate him so much. I really oh, do. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, I was going to say love you, too, but I take it back now. But I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Know the, the, yeah, the damage this, is done. It's over. Yeah. The damage is well, all done. I'm Thank just you. happy. I'm just I'm just happy that, that the Wi-Fi gods were in <laughs> my favor over the last three days. Just there's only one god, it. ma'am, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't dress like that. Thank you so very much for watching and being here. I love and appreciate you. So until next time, see ya. Bye. Oh, wait a minute. That's the wrong thing. I was trying to find the mouse fan logo. Wait a minute. There it is. Well done. <laughs> Aw, see, isn't that pretty? We have to update that.